In today's video, I'm going to be revealing my top five altcoins of 2024. In this video, I'm going to break down my top five altcoin picks that I think are a worthy hold in my portfolio for the year of 2024. I'll be giving you my reasoning behind each altcoin pick, diving into my fundamental thesis behind each altcoin, as well as any specific catalysts or announcements that altcoin has for the year. This video is going to be part one of a series which covers my favorite altcoins of the year. There'll be a new video every single week until you have my full list. So today I'm starting with some of the coins I'm most bullish on. Next week, I'll be revealing my top five unreleased altcoins. So these are altcoins which aren't released into the market yet, but when they launch, you have a chance to get into early. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss that video. This is going to be an awesome weekly series to kick off the year. And over 63% of my viewers actually aren't even subscribed to the channel. So if that's one of you, make sure to remember to click that subscribe button uh, for this weekly series and also hit that notification bell because it does pay to be early in crypto and I do my best to give you the best information in the market as I get it to ensure that I can help you succeed in the market and make money in crypto. So one little thing to note before I get into this list is that this video is in order of conviction. It was hard to order these coins but I've tried my best to put them in from rank 5 which is my least conviction bet of today's video all the way through to rank 1 which is my highest conviction bet of today's video but obviously this is a top 5 list so I'm bullish on all of the altcoins in this list from rank 5 to rank 1. I just wanted to save the best to last, so make sure you do stick around to the end to hear my thesis on my number 1 altcoin, uh, because it's a good one. Without further ado, let's get into altcoin pick number 5. Um, this kind of encompasses a few altcoins, but I've tried to narrow it down to one or two, those altcoins being Arbitrum and Optimism. They've been slightly lagging in price recently, and I think this is largely down to the fact that the ETH narrative has been fairly weak. So the market has been backing a lot of these newer Layer 1s and Layer 2s. You've seen Celestia perform really well. You've seen Ejective perform really well. Of course, Solana is also performing really well. The Ethereum narrative has been lagging behind, but there is a very big catalyst coming for Ethereum um, that I think doesn't necessarily impact Ethereum as much as it impacts the Layer 2s, and that is, of course, the EIP 4844 upgrade, which is said to reduce fees on Ethereum Layer 2s by an order of magnitude. So if you were paying $1 for a swap on Polygon before, you could now be paying only 4 or $0.05. Cents. If you were paying $2 for an LP deposit on Arbitrum, now you might only be paying 5 to $0.10. Cents. So it's going to definitely be an adoption catalyst for layer twos because it makes them cheaper and more competitive to use versus a lot of these other networks like Solana, for example. Um, and this has been a big problem for layer twos in recent times because they essentially can't scale, even though they are Ethereum layer twos and they're supposed to help ETH scale. During times of high network activity, they suffer from the same network congestion issues that Ethereum does. So this is one of the most important upgrades for these layer twos to actually become cheaper, more scalable. Um, and easy to use for the average user. And the way EIP 4844 works is it introduces a new kind of transaction type on Ethereum, which starts to accept blobs of data instead of individual bytes of data to be persisted in the beacon node for a short period of time. This means you can batch data together in order to uh, post less call data, which reduces the gas fees on these layer twos. So when is EIP 4844 happening? Well, it was supposed to happen in Q4 2023. Three, but the developers disclosed that January is their tentative date for the Denkin upgrade on the Gurley testnet. So obviously they need to initiate the upgrade on testnet, make sure it works before they roll out a mainnet, which would lead me to believe we're looking at a February slash March deployment for EIP 4844 on mainnet. Thus, some of these L2s like Arbitrum and Optimism um, deserve a place in my portfolio and become a decent narrative bet, uh, especially around this time. And look, fundamentally, they've all been super strong, relatively stagnant, but, um, you know, all been holding up pretty nicely in terms of daily active addresses. If we look at uh, Arbitrum specifically, it's been pretty impressive hovering around the 180k uh, daily active address region. And if you also look at TVL, we know that these are major players in the overall DeFi landscape with Arbitrum at number four and Optimism at number seven. And despite Solana performing really well um, and maybe outperforming over the past few months, they've still managed to hold up ground. Yes, they haven't grown as fast as some of the other chains, but they've still beat Ethereum, Tron, BSC. Uh, they've just been lagging behind these, you know, more popular blockchains like Solana and Avalanche. And one more point I want to make on the layer twos before we get into my altcoin pick number four of today's video 
is the fact that Ethereum has been performing really badly, and I think some of these L2 ecosystem plays represent somewhat of a proxy to an ETH reversal, if you think an ETH reversal is coming. Now, I haven't done my uh, predictions video for the year yet. That's something I'm going to be doing next week, where I outline my top 10 predictions for 2024. But spoiler alert, one of the predictions I'm going to make is that ETH BTC at some point makes a strong recovery. Because I think the ETH narrative has just been so beaten down over the last couple of weeks, a lot of maybe unnecessary necessary and unjust FUD to the, towards the Ethereum side. And yes, it's been lagging in terms of price, but I don't think Ethereum's going anywhere. I'm extremely bullish on Ethereum. It has the most developers. It has the most funding. It has the most TVL. And despite what you may be led to believe, it hasn't been losing market share in TVL terms, only being superseded by transactions on blockchains like Solana, which have, you know, very popular meme coin ecosystems right now. So Ethereum is something that I'm not fading next year. And the L2s also represent an interesting proxy bet uh, in order to get exposure to the ETH narrative. Before we get into altcoin pick number four, I want to remind you that if you want a place to buy any of the coins or trade any of the coins that I'm talking about in today's video, BitGet is the perfect place because they have all the listings of all the major coins. And if you sign up now, you can get up to $5,000 in bonuses plus a 10% deposit cashback. And for a limited amount of time, they're also running a $1,000 new gift package. So this essentially enables you to take part in their custom rewards where you can open things like fortune wheels to claim USDT rewards. And if you scroll down on their rewards page, you can see you can claim this $1,000 USDT welcome pack in order for completing some simple tasks over on the exchange. They also have a point redemption mechanism, which allows you to earn USDT discounts on the exchange, etc. So really awesome Christmas New Year promotion that BitGet is doing. So if you weren't on the fence about signing up, not only is it a great exchange, but you can claim access to all of these rewards via the link in the description. Uh, I also just want to explain how simple it is to actually buy crypto. If you do want to buy any of the tokens I talked about today, Arbitrum Optimism or my top four picks that I'm about to get into um, in today's video, they have a credit debit card on ramp. So you can simply on ramp from a credit card or a debit card uh, in order to gain USDT. Once you have USDT on the exchange, you can also swap straight into Bitcoin or other specific tokens. Go to the trade section of the exchange, click on spot and any coin that you do want to buy, you can just search up uh, and purchase it directly here. So of course they have Arbitrum, of course they have Optimism, but they have a lot of the other tokens I'll be talking about in today's video as well. And buying is super simple. You simply enter the price. You can set a limit order or a market order if you want to buy at market, set the amount that you want to spend and simply click buy and the tokens will show up in your BitGet wallet. So super simple to use the exchange. And once again, link in the description if you want to claim access to the rewards program as well as my custom sign up bonus. Us. Let's get straight into the rest of the video, kicking it off with altcoin number four. This is DYDX, and it's a, a project that I'm extremely bullish on long term because it represents um, a really nice bet on the DEX narrative. Now, you know how bullish I am on the DEX narrative. I believe that as new retail participants come into crypto, because DEXs earn fees based on the amount of volume being traded, increased retail interest is a super positive catalyst for these DEXs. And I believe in the ethos of decentralization and having a bona fide decentralized solution to trade. I think is extremely valuable in the crypto economy and it's not something we've fully seen yet But I think out of all of the DEXs, DYDX is one that I'm most bullish off considering they're the most decentralized They're launching on their own chain on Cosmos, which is very ambitious But it does signal a step towards them wanting to become, you know, more composable and more customizable versus the Ethereum chains And I think that if you want to take a bet on the DEX narrative in general DYDX is the biggest and represents a very high upside play, considering it's also one of the applications that earns the most money in crypto. If you look at the top 25 projects for fee generation, DYDX ranks here in the top 15. Um, and this is alongside other big networks like Bitcoin, Tron, Ethereum. Then you have Lido, then you have Uniswap, your staple Ethereum dApps like Aave, the money market, MakerDAO, which is um, being powered by real world assets recently. And then you have DYDX slotting in here at a $36 million fee generation over the past 180 days. So we can complicate things as much as we like, but I'll just put it very simply. It makes money. And that's not necessarily a guaranteed thing in crypto investing. A lot of applications, they don't make money and you're investing on the promise of future income. Well, applications like DYDX, I like because there is a calculation, a DCF model that you can implement when you do have concrete revenue numbers. And that's also, you know, why I like inv investing in these coins because it's easy to project uh, and find asymmetries in the market based on fee generation. Now it is being fudded. 
because of the fact that they have this very aggressive unlock schedule. We've had the first unlock. We're about to see the second unlock. Now, this is going to put a lot of suppressatory price pressure on the token. So this is a risky one in the sense that price is being suppressed. So it may not necessarily be the strongest performer in your portfolio within the next few months. But what I do believe is going to happen at some point this year as the unlock curve uh, starts to level out, I believe that people are going to start feeling more comfortable jumping into DYDX as an investment because more and more tokens are being unlocked. And that will also coincide with the launch of their V4, which is going to be on their own chain. And if that goes well, that can be a really strong catalyst for DYDX as well. So yeah, maybe within the next month or two, there's no rush to buy DYDX. But I certainly think at some point in the year, it's a super strong performer. And I do believe at the end of the year, we are going to look back, assuming you know, the market keeps its positive trajectory um, and call DYDX one of the strongest performers underneath the DEX narrative, which of course I do want exposure to. So that's why I like DYDX combined with the fact that technically speaking on the daily and the weekly charts, it's sitting above a very key technical level. So despite a lot of supply pressure now coming onto the market with this second major unlock, it still looks decent from a technical high time frame perspective. So clearly watch this major support at $2.70. Um, watch how DYDX reacts around this price. But this is definitely a level I'd like to play off in terms of A, support buying, and, and B, if it does break down below, um, when it breaks back above and looks to hold this level, that can also be a breakout trade that I end up taking on DYDX. So this is definitely one on my list for good reason. Let's get on to token number three, which is Celestia. Now, I'm a big fan of the modular thesis, and Celestia represents one of the only current bona fide bets in the market that you can make on modular. Looking in front of you, this represents visually how Celestia operates. It has its consensus and data layer. On top of that, you can stack on the Cosmos SDK as well as L2s like Manta, uh, which I'm also quite bullish on. Then you have Polygon L2s, OP stack, Ethereum layer 2s, and Arbitrum, which can all stack on top of Celestia. And this is only possible because they are essentially a modular blockchain. So multiple components um, can be stacked onto Celestia. And we're already seeing lots of new applications starting to launch on Celestia because of this. You have Eclipse, which is using Celestia to post data. Um, this is a new L2 that I really like that's powered by the Solana virtual machine. You, of course, have Manta, which we'll talk about in a second, which is a layer two protocol building on top of Celestia. And overall, we're already seeing decent momentum when it comes to the ecosystem. Lots of new applications being built, airdrop farming, and new deployments happening all the time. So for that reason, I like Celestia. Now, it has pumped a lot in price. So for me, this is one on dips that I'll be buying. Looking at the FDV, it's crazy. So if, if I just look at the FDV here and, and, and look at 14 bill, I think, wow, this is really overvalued. But I need to kind of snap myself out of this whole FDV game because remember the bull run in 2021? The, the market just did not care about FDV because in a bull market, all that really matters is the amount of circulating tokens. Yes, investors use FDV to gauge investment potential, but circulating supply is more important in the short term. And that's why we saw coins like Solana hit crazy multi-hundred billion dollar FDVs. And I think we're going to see it again this cycle. So I'm trying not to let FDV deter me from investing in Celestia. And that might sound counterintuitive, but it's because in a bull run, oftentimes the market just doesn't care. And I would not be surprised if the market cap just kept going higher and higher and higher if the market maintains positive momentum. Um, I think Celestia is going to be at the forefront alongside the other popular layer ones like Injectives. I also like Injective, but for me, I put Celestia uh, as the third spot in this list. And I've been lucky enough that I'm still holding my airdrop. So by now, you probably know I post a, a lot of airdrop content over on Twitter and also on YouTube. In 2022, so more than a year ago now, on December 1st, I outlined Celestia as one of the top airdrops that I was watching. And I mean, a year later, Celestia is now at $14. So any recipient of that airdrop would have made five, six, seven, eight maybe even $10,000. I mean, I know I have a sizable airdrop that I'm still holding on to. I've been taking profits, but long term, I'm still bullish. So I'm holding on to my principal position. I also shared it again on the 29th of January for anyone that missed out on that initial post. So if you were following me over on Twitter, you would have had two opportunities uh, where I pointed you towards Celestia as an airdrop that I was going for. So congratulations to everyone that did get it. If you didn't, the strategy now I think is buying on major dips. We are currently in an uptrend, but remember we do get major pullbacks still in uptrends. So uptrends aren't constant, usually in halving years. And I know this cycle looks a little bit different to previous cycles, but typically in pre-halving years and then 
in the beginning um, towards the halving of the halving year, we do experience drawdowns of some capacity. Now, maybe this won't be the 30, 40, 50% drawdowns that we saw in previous cycles, but you will get opportunities on major dips where there is negative news that comes out. When sentiment does turn slightly bearish for a period of time, maybe it's a week, maybe it's three weeks, and then this is when you can start positioning yourselves in these coins that you think you may have missed. But I also think it's extremely important to be in strength in the market. And this is something that a lot of people get wrong. They always try and long laggards and find the next catch-up play and, and find the next rotation play. But oftentimes the leaders in the market remain leaders for a reason. So let's say we went into a crazy explosive bull run tomorrow and Bitcoin went to 100k tomorrow, right? Just as a thought experiment. What do you think are going to be the strongest performers? Probably Solana, probably Injective, and probably and probably Celestia right now as it stands, alongside things like AVAX, say these other coins that have been really strong in recent times. So if your thesis is the market is going to continue upwards, it would be remiss of you not to have some exposure to these stronger narratives in the market, Celestia being one of them. So always make sure you have some exposure to strength. That doesn't mean buying the highs. You can still be smart with how you accumulate, DCAing on major dips, being you know smart with your position sizing, etc., uh, hedging risk. But the major takeaway here is that longing strength in the market is often the way to go versus trying to catch that next catch up rotation play. I'm not going to officially put Manta in on this list because I wanted to keep this as a liquid list. My unreleased list is going to be coming next week. But Manta, because it's part of the Celestia narrative, uh, I thought was uh, a nice honorable mention in today's video, um, considering it's a modular L2 leveraging Celestia's consensus. So this is one of the first layer twos actually being built on top of Celestia. And it's one that I'm quite bullish on next year. Um, now, for airdrop farmers, I do have an important announcement. You only have five more days to take part in the Manta New Paradigm. So Manta New Paradigm is essentially Manta's iteration of Blast, which is an application that allows you to deposit Ethereum or stable coins and earn yield on those stable coins in order for keeping them on Manta Pacific. Now, I do think in terms of a Manta airdrop itself, users and participants of Manta Pacific, which, as I said, you only have five more days to take part in, uh, are going to be favored in terms of an airdrop, especially those that build up a lot of points and a lot of TVL. So if you're sitting on the sidelines right now, one easy thing you could do is simply deposit ETH or USDC. It's still your coins and still your Ethereum, of course. Deposit it and stake it over on Manta Pacific because this is is potentially going to give you access to an airdrop and it also gives you access to nft airdrops just yesterday night i made five thousand dollars and obviously you know i'm a creator so i I probably have more referees than your typical user, but still, I made $5,000 um, in terms of NFTs that I got airdropped because they're running this NFT campaign over the next week, which basically allows you to earn NFTs for staking. Um, so yeah, you only have five more days to do it. If you use the link in the description below, my official referral link, that gives you direct access to the website to deposit, and then you can also join my team as well. So if you would like to take part in the Matter Pacific New Paradigm campaign, click the link in the description below and you can deposit Ethereum. As Mingo says here, deposits end on the 31st. He's also a notable airdrop farmer um, and he's depositing there as well. And I know CC2, who's another huge airdrop farmer on Twitter, is also depositing as well. I just scrolled down in his profile here and see uh, here he says he made two NFTs, which are currently trading at $1,181 as a reward for staking Ethereum. And he says that it might matter towards a Manta allocation when the airdrop does come. So that's a little bonus one for you guys, but I'll talk more about some of my unreleased picks because the Manta token isn't live yet uh, in the next video. But of course, that's the main way to get an airdrop right now. Now let's move on to old queen pick number two. And this is Thorchain. Now, if you ask me right now, what is the best way for me to swap Ethereum to Bitcoin on chain in a decentralized manner? There's only really one protocol that stands out and that's Thorchain. So Thorchain really fits a need in the market where it's the one of the only bona fide working decentralized interoperable exchanges. And I just love this narrative in crypto. I think it's so important. I think interoperability it should be at the forefront of our minds um, when it comes to crypto and ThorChain, which offers cross-chain liquidity and has some amazing protocols built on top of the network. It's just a logical inclusion in my 2024 portfolio. Now that's on the narrative side. The real reason why Rune is going to be a mainstay of my 2020 for portfolios because of this. In order to facilitate a swap, let's say from Ethereum to Bitcoin, the way Rune works is it has LP, so liquidity pools, with Rune in the pools. So when you swap from Ethereum to Bitcoin, you're actually swapping ETH for Rune 
and then it's swapping that rune for Bitcoin to facilitate the swap on the other side. So what this means is that at all times, in the Omni pools is what they're called, rune and Ethereum, rune and Bitcoin, any asset you want to swap, needs to be paired one-to-one -one in terms of its dollar value in order to facilitate that swap. But what happens in a bull run is that the Ethereum and the Bitcoin prices increase significantly. And if Rune doesn't catch up in price to these other assets, then the pools become unevenly balanced and then you can't as efficiently facilitate swaps. So what happens is in order to make sure the Rune price moves accordingly with the Ethereum and the Bitcoin price, in order to incentivize new deposits to come in to balance things out, so enough Rune is in the pool um, to balance out with Bitcoin and ETH, what they do is they increase the APRs on staking Rune. So if there's ever a discrepancy, the APRs will jump up, which then incentivizes people to come in, provide liquidity, and balance out the pools. What this means is that in order to stake, they're buying up Rune. So essentially, Rune, in a way, is a reflexive or a leveraged bet on a bull market. So if there's a major bull market and you know that Bitcoin and Ethan, not only that, but other assets, as you can see in front of you, are going to explode, you know that Rune, in order for the application to work, it also needs to readjust higher in price. So it's a super reflexive mechanism, which means TVL doesn't just scale linearly. It scales in a compounding nature because the amount of Rune that needs to be deposited increases alongside the fact that the principal tokens like Bitcoin and ETH are also increasing. So if you believe there's a bull market in 2024, or even if you believe there are just going to be periods of bullish expansion, look out for Rune because it will be during these periods, in my opinion, one of the strongest performers. And as people start to catch on to this, I do think that Rune can be a super strong performer because it not only has a product that's needed in crypto, but it also has the mechanism to make it super successful in terms of price. Now, for this reason, if the market enters bearish conditions, Rune can perform super badly. And that's why it experiences drawdowns, oftentimes, especially in the bear market, greater than other projects. Look how terrible it looked during this period um, in June, July, August. Why did it look so bad during this period? That was because no one was swapping and there was no network activity and prices were relatively low. So there was no real reason to hold and stake Rune. But as protocol activity increased with more swaps and as Ethereum and Bitcoin increased in price, demanding more Rune in the pools, it performed really well and it actually ended up outperforming the market. So if you're bullish next year, Rune is a almost a leverage bet on the market. Whereas if you're bearish in 2024, you want to be cautious in terms of holding Rune. So it really depends what your outlook on the market is. My outlook is that we're in a bull trend. And when you're in a bull trend, you have to play the trend, which means being bullish. So for that reason, Rune uh, has a deserved place in my portfolio. I've held it for a long time. I've been DCAing throughout the bear market. We have seen signs of Rune waking up, but this can go a lot higher if the market really rips. If you actually think Bitcoin can hit 100K, then, I mean, just watch out for a token like Rune. Um, it can be extremely explosive. And I think market cap wise, it's not crazy at a three bill fully diluted and a 1.8 bill market cap. It's not cheap, but it's not totally crazy either. And for that reason, uh, it's in my portfolio. Now for my number one altcoin pick of today's video, and that is Frax Share. What you need to know about Frax is that it's essentially a DeFi powerhouse. So they have multiple things going for them. They have their lending protocol. They have a new layer two chain that they're launching. They have exposure to the real world asset narrative as well as the stablecoin narrative. And they only have a $650 million market cap to represent this with most of their tokens currently in circulation and their annual emission schedule reduces every single year. So Frax is a protocol for me that if you're bullish on DeFi in general, or if you're just simply bullish on a team that's shown the propensity to ship amazing products throughout what has been a really difficult bear market, then Frax makes complete sense as a buy and hold for 2024. I mean, just look in front of you. They have their L2 launching in Q1. They have their airdrop for Frax chain users, by the way, that you could still get involved in if you hold VEFXS, which is their staked Frax token. It fits the LSD narrative and the real asset narrative. It had recently had their halving, which reduced uh, emissions in half. You have a partnership with other major key players in the space, for example, Trader Joe. And the Curve founder is bullish on BAMM, which is a new Frax standard. So I'm extremely bullish in terms of the overall narrative that it encompasses and my conviction in the team to execute on those narratives. Sam is an amazing founder. He's done great things over the last year. I really enjoy listening to his AMAs. And I do believe that Frax is a bit of a sleeping giant in, in the sense that it hasn't really moved aggressively in price. But 
it definitely has that upside potential. So you can see here, technically speaking, on the weekly, it is holding above this key level at $7.60. But I think once Frack starts moving, at some point this year, it may not be now, it may not be in Feb, it may not be in March, but at some point throughout 2024, I think Frax performs really strongly. And I just really like overall the balance it gives my portfolio. It gives me exposure to a variety of narratives. It balances out the DeFi section of my portfolio, which in recent times has started to be outweighed by a lot of these other L1s and layer two. So it gives me some nice balance there. And it's also a project where I really back the team. And in crypto, the number one prerequisite for a project success is the team. The token, the branding, the logo, all that is a facade. What is underneath is the team's ability to ship amazing products, the team's ability to innovate, to scale. And I do believe Frax has that in place. So it's one of the reasons why I'm bullish on Frax. So that is today's video of the top five altcoins for 2024. If you do want to purchase any of these altcoins, as well as getting access to the $5,000 bonus, 10% deposit cashback, and the custom reward center, which allows you to claim a welcome pack of 1000 USDT alongside a fortune wheel where you can spin and earn more USDT, then you can use the link in the description below. You're supporting the channel at the same time and you're also getting access to the sign-up bonuses. So in my opinion, it's a win-win. Let me know in the comments below what token you're most bullish on for the year of 2024. I'll reply to as many comments as I can and I'm going to see you in the next video. Remember, the unreleased altcoin video is going to be coming next week as well. Have a lovely rest of your day. Peace out.